Hey everyone, it's Mojax back in the DJ City UK lab. Today we are looking at the Denon DJ SC5000M media player. Now let's talk about the Prime series in general. It all came out last year with the X1800 mixer, the VL12 turntable and the star of the show as far as I was concerned, the SC5000 Prime media player. This did stuff which no other media player had done before. Proper pad section at the front. You've got a really high resolution multi-touch screen. You can scroll through your tracks, you can pinch your waveforms, all that kind of stuff. It's a lot like using a tablet, but it is standalone. You've got three USB ports, you've got an SD card slot in the front, and it will analyze your files on the fly. It's a very powerful piece of hardware. Now, if you're a regular viewer, you will have seen this kit in subsequent videos. The white skin stuff from 12 inch skins, that is the original Denon review units. And they haven't had those back off me yet because I've been doing videos about firmware updates and because I do feedback to them on a regular basis with stuff that I think needs improving or changing or just feedback on what they've been doing. You know, that's a good relationship we have. But also I don't shill for any company here, any manufacturer. I give them all a hard time on equal measure, whether that's Denon DJ, Pioneer, whoever it is, right, it doesn't matter. And like I did with Record Box, when I got really into Record Box standalone a few years ago, I was really pushing that, I decided to put my money where my mouth is. So this black SC5000 over here, that's mine. That's the one I bought myself from a retailer, didn't even buy it from Denon TJ. This is my unit that I have in my house. It's got two layers there. So you only need one player for two decks. That's got me covered. That's all I need at home. I have my turntables and everything else. And yeah, I'm a big fan of the SC5000. I'm really, and I've committed to it myself, my own money. So I hope that puts into context what I'm about to say about the SC5000M. Let's get to it. The main body of this review is actually going to be quite short because aside from the spinning platter, which I'll get to shortly, the SC5000M is basically the SC5000 Prime. There are some minor changes to the side of the body to accommodate the motor tech, but the layout is virtually identical and the feature set is the same, as is the really important stuff, what's under the hood. So rather than talk you through the controls and options on the M, I'll instead refer you to my review of the Prime. We'll link that one down below, and you can assume that, unless I say otherwise, everything in that video about the features on that player also applies to this one. The only feature missing on the M compared to the Prime is the central display in the jog wheel, but that's no biggie. Obviously, Q position is taken care of by the vinyl itself, and the loop length info was already duplicated on the screen. Instead, I'll use this as a chance to give a kind of mid-term report on the SC5000 platform. After 18 months, how is it holding up? In terms of build, there's nothing which has caught my attention in a negative way. Everything still feels as good as new, on both my player and those in the lab. Sound quality has proved itself to me on a number of different systems of different size and quality. Perhaps most importantly, the players are stable. With there being so much computing power going on inside these players, that was a concern. Sometimes gear can push technology too far too soon, but not once have I suffered from a crash or a freeze or anything of that nature in that 18 months. The SC5000s have never let me down. The layer function offering two discrete decks in each player has proved very useful, even more so now that the Prime and the M have instant doubles. This can be done between layers on the same deck or between any of up to four players networked together. It behaves exactly as you'd expect. It means that anyone who does the one deck instant doubles thing on Serato DJ will feel right at home. I still prefer having two physical players when I'm performing at gigs. It's just more comfortable in a pressured environment, but working with one player alone is perfectly achievable. Speaking of Serato DJ, the HID style control mode for Serato DJ on the SC5000 Prime is fantastic, and so I do hope they'll bring that to the M as soon as possible. Then on DJ's own Engine Prime library management software has been improving, albeit a bit slowly. I still don't find it as intuitive to use as Pioneer DJ's record box, there's no doubt about that, but changes have been forthcoming, and indeed there is a brand new update dropping on the day of me doing this recording. I'm constantly feeding back ideas and questions to Denon DJ, not all of which have been addressed yet, but overall I'm happy with the trajectory of the software, even if the pace can seem a little bit slow sometimes. What is exciting on the software side of things is how far the company are taking their stage link technology, which allows the Prime series to connect to visuals, lighting, and front of house. 
They've acquired Sound Switch, which controls DMX lighting. There is a direct link to Resolume now for visuals, and they're working with the software Timecode, which feeds playback info to front of house for big shows. I'll be looking at all of this quite soon. One negative step which Denon DJ took with the Prime players, and which is now carried over to the M, is a change to pitch resolution that they made in a recent firmware update. I've always been a plus or minus 6% pitch range kind of guy with CDJs, as that gives you resolution of 0.02%, as opposed to the 0.05 resolution found in the 10% range. I find that extra accuracy hugely valuable when doing really long blends. At launch, the Prime series had 0.01 resolution in the plus and minus 4% range, which was fantastic. But since the update, the players have 0.05 resolution in all ranges. Now, to be fair, probably 95% of the DJs that I know use the 10% range on CDJs and therefore won't mind this. But for me and the other members of the 6% squad, this just doesn't cut it, especially considering that Denon DJ had even better resolution to begin with. So put simply, that needs changing back quite urgently. Now let's get to what's new with the SC5000M, the spinning platter. This is driven by a high torque direct drive motor with two torque options and adjustable braking time. There are two options for startup speed found in the menu. Traditional, which follows the speed of the platter, and instant, so when you press the play button, audio begins immediately at full speed, which I much prefer. There is one slightly weird bit of behavior. The motor is only designed to do plus or minus 50% pitch range, so if you use the 100% range on the player and go beyond 50, the platter stops. It's not really a problem, the player still works, it just might catch some people out if they aren't expecting it. And personally, I'd rather they retained the 100% range on the players should you want to use it. The underlying technology is the same as that on the Rain 12 and the Newmark NS7. So on top of the platter is a regular slip mat, then a piece of real 7-inch vinyl is attached to the spindle. As with the Rain 12, you can drill holes in any record you'd like to use, something you can see I've taken full advantage of during testing, although the supplied black vinyl is nice and light with a good feel out of the box. You can adjust the resistance as you install the vinyl, so it should be tweakable to pretty much any taste. Like the 12, you can't really grip the spindle to pitch bend up, as the vinyl is bolted to it. But unlike the 12, there are dedicated pitch bend buttons for that purpose. I also found, as it's so small, it's easy to give the side of the platter a little push forward when it's spinning to achieve much the same thing. The speed and rotation info is sent to the player with 3600 ticks per rotation, which means the player feels incredibly tight and accurate, and there is no discernible lag whatsoever that I can feel. Once you've adapted to the smaller control surface compared to a full-size turntable, it simply feels like playing a record. There's no cue point slip either, and Denon DJ have done something similar to Serato DJ's stable BPM option, so there is no wow and flutter. Once the deck is spinning, it stays locked onto a tempo precisely, just like with a static platter. Because of this, with the SC5000M, you really do feel like you're getting the best of both worlds. You have that raw analog feel when queuing and scratching, but all the precision and accuracy of a regular digital player when mixing. One negative, with a player like this, which is so capable when it comes to scratching, then on DJ do still need to work on their scratch algorithm. It's fine when doing normal club style cuts, but very slow scratches and drags do still sound rather robotic, especially with percussive rather than melodic content. The time stretch algorithm is otherwise excellent, so it's a surprise to find that aspect still isn't quite nailed. Finally, one thing about the SC5000M which is important to DJs like me, who don't usually have a tech rider, is the portability side of things. Size-wise, the M is identical to the Prime thanks to the size of the platter, and it's only about £5 heavier at £14. By comparison, the Rain 12 is as big as a regular turntable and weighs in at over £20. So while some folks might be happier with a full 12-inch size player, for me, the SC5000M is a far more practical solution for DJs who have to carry their own kit. So there you go, a good look around the Denon DJ SC5000M. Now this is my second attempt at doing this conclusion. I did it once before, and although I explained how I felt about the players, I couldn't really clarify exactly why that was, even in my own head. Since then, I've done a couple more gigs, and I think I'm starting to get my head around it now. I think I understand why I feel the way that I do. The first thing to say about the Prime ecosystem in general is that the weak link in the chain is still the Engine Prime software. Yes, it's improved since it first came out. It continues to improve, 
but fundamentally, if you're used to managing your library with Rekordbox, then you're gonna find Engine Prime more clunky, less fluid, that's just how it is. And when it comes to library management, Rekordbox is the gold standard. And that's not necessarily a diss on Denon DJ because you know Serato and Native Instruments have been doing DJ software a lot longer than Denon DJ and their library management doesn't come close to Rekordbox either. It's just, it's so far out there ahead of everything else. But fundamentally, Engine Prime does work. It lets you manage your library. It lets you get your cue points in there and everything else and get exported out to the hardware. And the hardware really is what counts. And I did really fall in love with the SC5000 Prime player. That's why I bought one for myself. I absolutely dig it. It's just got this power under the hood. It feels like having a small computer inside your player. All the power of the cues and the loops and everything else is all there right in the player. It just feels fantastic. If you ask me, have I changed my rider? Yeah, if you give me the option of choosing the CDJs or the Prime Series, I'm gonna choose the Prime Series. But crucially, although I do think they are better and I prefer playing on the Primes, I didn't really take them out with me. You know, I took them to a few gigs here and there, of course, but if I was playing at a bar or a club and they've got Nexus or Nexus 2 players installed and it's a choice between rocking up with a little pouch of USB sticks or a pouch of USB sticks and two media players, then generally I'm gonna go for that lazier option because you know, Nexus 2s, Nexuses, they do the job for the way that I DJ, it's fine. I would prefer to be on Primes, but you know, CDJs, they do the job. So generally these have kind of stayed at home as a rule, you know, unless I'm doing special events or something, they've stayed at home. The SC5000M, this is a different story. I'm gonna try and get Denon DJ to take back one of the Prime review units, send me another M, and when they do, these will be going with me everywhere. If I'm not using a controller, you know, as long as the venue's got a decent mixer and I'm not playing a vinyl set, then I'll be taking these in and I'll be swapping out the CDJs and putting these in instead because these are just the most fun things I can just think of right now in DJing. They are just so much fun. And this is the thing, right? I'm old. I come from the vinyl background. I started out on vinyl, but now we've got 2018. Here we are, the SC5000M. All of that power, more power than CDJs with real vinyl, with a spinning platter. And it's just a joy for someone who comes from that vinyl roots. I love it, I absolutely love it. I want to DJ more so I can DJ on the M's. Very simple, right? This it just makes me want to play music because it's just so hands-on. If you are from those vinyl roots, there's just nothing like this. Yeah, it's not a full 12 inch or a 10 inch or anything like that, but you've got to think about portability. If this was the size of a Rain 12, that would be great, and I'm sure turntablists would kind of prefer that, but I'm not carrying that around. However good they are, I'm not carrying around a 12 inch platter thing. It's too big. It's not practical to fit into a backpack or something like that. This, I can put this in a backpack. Uh, hopefully Decksaver will come out with a Decksaver that will fit it, and I'll be able to put this in a backpack and then put another one in a sort of soft bag or a case and carry these around because they are not too big and heavy to carry. They are portable. I can use these, and yeah, it's just, the most fun. The vinyl control feels fantastic. There's no weirdness added, you know, there's no wow and flutter or anything like that. It just feels completely solid, like a regular media player, like the Prime, but with seven inch spinning vinyl on there. It just makes me happy. It makes me smile. Every time I step up and play on this thing, I wanna play more. It makes me grin like a lunatic. This is just my favorite thing on the market right now, probably in any kind of category of product. It just makes me happy. What can I say? Thank you for watching today. Do make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell icon down below to get notified anytime there's a new video from myself or the rest of the DJ City team. I'll see you soon.